Hello, welcome along to this video. I want to talk today about the access rights that you need in a Microsoft 365 tenant to perform these cloud migrations. Now, quite often the client may say, if you just bulldoze in and say, I need global admin rights to do these migrations, they might be a little bit nervous about giving a service account that you're requiring there, uh, the GA rights on the tenant. Well, spoiler alert for this video, you don't need global admin rights. I'm going to show you what you do need, what you actually need to ask for, and, and how to get that down inside the tenant. Then I'm going to show you an actual live migration with those uh, with those rights, with that uh, heavy reduced rights on that service account and show you it working so let's get stuck in let's start off then with the source tenant and you can see here this is our cozy mouse tenant and i've got one created already with uh, global admin rights and it's got a mailbox and everything's there and we have used that account in particular demonstrations and, and that will obviously work as a, as a global administrator as you see here and it has a mailbox as you'll see here as well let's just give that a second It'll pop up. There we go. So have a mailbox and licensed user. It's got that E5 license as well, which, as, you, as I was saying before, is a bit of an overkill for this service account. We don't need to have all of that. What we're going to do is I'm going to create a brand new user here, and we're just going to call it, let's call it MigWiz2, like so, and like that. MigWiz2, and there we go. And we're going to say no license for this one. We don't want to put one on there and no admin access either. So it's just basically a standard account. OK, that's all good. Now I'm going to go and change that password just offline. So we'll all keep that handy. But for now, we'll just hit close and consider that one done. So you can see now if we look down here, oops, excuse me. There we go. MigWiz. I need to refresh that. And we should see MigWiz do pop up. There it is there. And just to clarify as well, you can see it's unlicensed in that first section there. It has on the rules, no admin access, and obviously no mailbox, has no license, and it is zero in there. So really this is a very, very generic account. If we do log in with that, then of course it's going to just have basically a, a portal access and not much else. What I am going to do, is I'm going to add that account into the conditional access policy because the one thing it must uh, have is the uh, the MFA must be turned off. Now, if you've got the security defaults turned on, which you would have on a normal tenant, um, you'd normally have a conditional access policy which you can uh, move around that. So I'm going to move across to the enter ID and just show you that piece as well. So if we go across to the identity there, it'll take us into enter ID. We need to look for our conditional access policy, which is under protection and conditional access. And you'll see here in the policies, I have a single one, the MFA policy turned on and go in here. And I'm going to have a look at the particular user accounts it relates to. And I'm going to be doing an exclusion. You can see I've already got these two in here. And if I do an add on here, I can put in MigWiz2 and add that in there. So there we go and save that. That is done. So that is obviously a requirement so it doesn't get the MFA in for. So obviously that is something that uh, you need to request on that account as well is that that lifting of the uh, the enforcing of the MFA. Now it does also need the impersonation rights on the EWS system. Now that's mandatory. That's uh, something you will need to ask for and how you actually give that to an account. This is, this is the uh, the access it requires to be able to use the EWS, uh, which is that uh, uh, the web services system in the back end of 365, to be able to write data into uh, all of those accounts. So it's called application impersonation. It's in the help desk article. I'll come to that at the end. I'll show you where all this is. Uh, but what you need to do there is we need to just do the uh, connect exchange online, like so. I'm just going to pause while I put my password and things in. So bear with me for that. There we go. That's a, obviously an admin account on that tenant, on that source tenant. And the command we're going to be using here is we do new and it is a management role assignment. And the role we're going to be putting in there is going to be application in person, all is one word. And the user is going to be the MigWiz2. That's the user, obviously, the service account, the brand new one we just set up. And if you do that, it should come back pretty quickly and it assigns those rights in there. So obviously that's important. It definitely will not work without that, but we need to do that on both the source and the destination. 
Now, obviously, in the project as well, we do need to set up that migration with endpoint, uh, which is the, uh, and I'll point you to that in the help desk article, but this is one that I've set up. It's an app registration uh, that we set up for the endpoint, and you can see all it really needs in there in terms of uh, permissions, the authentication. Uh, it needs to have that entry, which again is in the article. I'm not here to show you how to do the, the uh uh, the application registration in this video we've got other videos for that but i just want to show you that it is set up and it is done exactly like a standard uh, app registration model so you can see it's got that endpoint there it is a multi-tenant item and you can see it's got the public flows enabled those are the three things that are very important to make that work and obviously on the api permissions as well you need to have uh, the delegated permissions for the office 365 exchange online which is the ews um, and that's what links that application impersonation uh, to, to this effectively. And you can see that's grounded in there. So once we come back here, obviously we'll then have the, uh, the IDs that we need to copy into the project. And you know what? You know, I always like to keep these videos pretty real with what we're doing. So you know, I've just made that decision. You know what? I will show you how to create these. They're really, really easy to create. Let's just make a new one and let's just do it. App registrations, which is obviously in your enter ID, you can see where that is there. And you just hit new registration, and we're going to call this one, let's call this one MigWiz2 endpoint. The only reference there is just the name, it doesn't relate to that account at all. But you can see here, accounts, multi tenant, and you can see we're going to add a public, and I'm going to add that entry. Now, this comes from the help desk article, you can read, you can copy it in from, uh, write it down from the video here if you want to, but that's the, the item you need to put in. So, very easy to do make that endpoint a couple of extra things we need to do though we do need to go into that authentication tab we do need to go down and turn that public flow on but you can see now it's really what we were looking at previously that's that easy to do and save that and then across the api permissions we need to add in those rights so we're going to add a permission there just go in here and we'll say api is my organization uses and if we start typing in office you'll see it will actually show up there we are Exchange Online, it's going to be a delegated permission and we need to go and look for EWS there, tick that box, add permission, job done, that's what we need to have here. And then we need to say grant admin consent for Cozy Mouse. Done. There, and then we come back to the overview. So yeah, like I say, the, the time it took me to say I'm not going to do it, um, we've actually just done it. Um, so nice and easy, there's our MigWiz2 endpoint. So I'm going to use that one in this uh, the demo of the mailbox we're going to do so you can see it was created nice and live. Now, we are going to need to do exactly the same thing inside the target tenant as well. So let me just minimize that one and that guy as well. Come down to this window, which is the target environment. And you can see I've got one of the service accounts already with all those rights in it, as we would have just set up before as the GA. But here we will do exactly the same thing. So I'll just record what I'm doing so you can see it happening again. MigWiz2, like so. MigWiz2 there. Next, no license, no admin access. I finish adding very, very basic account. Nothing special with that one at all. So there it is there. Okay, so what I will do now is I'm just going to go into the entry ID here. Uh, and let's have a look at these, not the app registration, I want to have a look at conditional access and look at these policies. And you can see all users MFA in there. I'm going to be excluding that MigWiz2 account. And we'll just go in here, select a new user, MigWiz2. Um, so you can see it's pretty quick and easy to do. We just throw it in there and we're done with that policy. That's good. And we're going to add that application impersonation. We're going to connect to Exchange Online. Just pause when I put my password in there. And once that logs in, we can now, it's new management role assignment and the role, you've seen this before, application impersonation. There we go. And the user will be migwiz2 at planium.com there we go okay so that's done we can close that out good now the last thing here on this tenant the app registration and you can see here i already have one i'm just going to be using that one that i've got from previous um exactly the same yeah authentication is all good 
API permissions, the AWS, so obviously exactly the same as the, the other one. So I don't need to recreate that for you. Uh, it's handy to have this open with this page and you'll see why when we create the project. So I'm going to leave it at this page here. Now for the accounts we're going to be migrating, I'm just going to do one as a test. I'm going to grab this guy, Bob Jones at Cozy Mouse. He's got plenty of mail in there. It's good for demonstration purposes. And I've made an account on the target side and I've just called it Test Migration 2. We're just going to put mail in there. As I say, this is just a demonstration and we can just map Bob Jones into Test Migration 2. And I just want to see things being transferred and happening. So, so that is our setup for our source and destination accounts. Okay, let's now go to the Migration Wiz console and we'll log in there. As you can see, logging as me, and I will go and create a new project for this one. So that'll be a mailbox project. And we we'll just give it a quick name like that. Give it a customer as well. And hit next step. So the endpoint will create a new one, uh, which we would do as, as normal. So we hit new and we'll give it a name in here as well. M365 Cozy Mouse, which is going to be a obviously a Microsoft 365. And this account here is the uh, the MigWiz 2 that we created earlier. Which we put those credentials in, hit add, and it comes up here. Now this is, uh, oh, thank you for adding. Uh, we're going to put in here these two items from the endpoint that we created earlier. So let's go back to our source here and go to our MigWiz 2 endpoint, and it's these items. So the application ID we're going to grab from here, there, like so, and just pop it in there. Let's now put it up there, grab the... I'm just doing it on one screen so you can see what I'm doing, and drop that in there. So next step, and now move on to that destination. So we'll again do a new endpoint, which we'll call the M365 for Plenium and select their endpoint M365. Yes, we'll put the credentials in and this is where we put in the MigWiz2 account again. Like so, and hit add on there. And then it's going to ask us for the same thing. And no, thank you we'll, for the same thing for those um, application IDs. So let's grab those from here. We'll go back to our endpoint. This is the one we want to use. So we'll grab that, copy that to the clipboard. I just drop that down here. Drop it in and this one as well. Paste it in. Next step. Uh, no, we're not going to do coexistence on this one. And save and go to summary and save project. And then we are pretty much ready to go. Put some people in there. So you could do the auto discover and grab everybody out there. In, in this particular one, I'm just going to do the, a quick add and I'll put in, uh, put in the details of that Bob Jones account there. So you can see I put in Bob Jones at Cozy Mouse, that's our source, and that test migration to account, the one we created just to collect the data. Obviously we're using the active mailbox, save item and close there. And that would pop into that screen. So uh, um, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just go click that and I'm gonna do verify credentials. Now by doing that, it's gonna log on uh, to both source and destination tenant, and it's gonna check out that those credentials, making sure it can do what it needs to do. So uh, obviously we're starting that this morning. I'm going to come back in a short time and and update you with what it says. And yeah, look at that with a refresh. You can see it's come back. It's completed the verification. It seems that everything is in order and working. So I'm going to go ahead now and just kick off a full migration on this one. So hit start, full migration, do everything basically, and hit start on that. And let's see it actually moving some data across with that uh, service account with those minimum rights on it. So, yeah, exciting. Let's come back in, in a short while and see, see what it's got. Now, you can see that started to migrate some data. Uh, but while I'm waiting for that, what I want to show you is in the Help Desk article, where it relates to all of what I've just done. So if we jump into Help, into Help Center, and in here we can say perform a migration and it's going to be in here exchange online to office 365 mailboxes and it'll be this other one down here exchange online to exchange online so that's where the article is now if we go through here what it says 
is da -da -da, create an admin account. Now, this is for the preparing the source, and obviously the destination is going to be the same. And it does state here that it says create an admin account in 365 to be used for migration. It means you're creating that service account, and it says here, or use the global admin account. Obviously, you can use a global admin account if you want to, but really what it's saying is it needs to have an, an, an account in 365 that must have full access to the mailboxes or be granted impersonation rights, which is that thing we did with PowerShell back there. So as you can see here, there's no requirement for it to have a mailbox and it doesn't have to be global admin because it says or. So really what we've done here, you can see here using the impersonation to authenticate, that will be default ticked anyway. I, I know that we can go back and check it, but it will be a default setting. Um, and uh, you can see then it goes on with how to do that. And obviously this is what we just did. The PowerShell, there's the uh, the management assignment role. So you can see all the information is in this article, um, but obviously I'm just putting it together in the video so you can just run through that step by step and see how that is meant to be done. If we go back to our Migration with project here and look at the advanced options, you'll see there it is that impersonation is set to be on there. And that is actually set in these support items, but you'll find that it actually comes out of this source and destination, which is from this tick box right here on both of those on the source and destination. So that's saying use the impersonation and it will use the uh, the MIGWIZ2 account that we created in both sides and be able to use impersonation because we we gave it that role assignment inside the uh, the PowerShell, which is what we were doing uh, throughout that uh, the start of the video. So you can see really essentially all we're doing is what it says in this documentation. I'm just taking you through exactly how that should be done. Well, we can jump back now to the migration with screen. Let's go back into the project and you can see, look, it's, it's done another 74 megawatt just while we were talking there. So it is migrating data. It's moving along. I'm going to come back when it's finished and we're going to go and check out the uh, service account. Sorry, the, the, the test migration to account and just to make sure that it does have data in there uh, inside. And um, we can see that from just looking at the mail tab inside the, the M365 console. So there we now have a completed migration. So what we should do really, just to confirm that mail is in there, I'm gonna go and log in as test migration two and have a look what it can see. Let me just drag this little window across here and let's go in test migration two, planium.com. We'll do the account there like so. It's gonna want that MFA that I actually already set up. There we go. And no, thank you. And what we should see in here is in Outlook, I should be seeing a ton of mail. Now, there we go. Now, admittedly, that is going to be the mail for Bob Jones. We did migrate Bob Jones mail into this. So when we see this, yeah, look at that Bob Jones at Cozy Mouse. But you can see it has done it with the service account that has very, very minimum rights, has no admin privileges in the tenant whatsoever, and it was still able to go ahead and do this migration. Now, if we have a look down here, let's just minimize that. Look at this account. You can see from a migration perspective, it's done everything. It's done all the, the, the calendars, contacts, everything it needs to do. And you can see we've got zero failures and it's been quite happy through it. In fact, it took 23 minutes to do the migration and uh, that is good. So that really concludes that session. Thank you for watching. I really hope this information does help you out. If you've got a client that is uh, not uh, wanting to have global admin accounts in their system for service accounts, and quite rightly so, I, I do agree with them on that. Really what we should be doing as migrators for uh, their data is trying to do things with the minimum rights possible, not just bulldoze in and say, I need global admin to do everything. You don't. And, and this obviously proves how we can get away without doing that. It also keeps you safe. It means there's no, uh, no access to a global admin account for the migration. So you're responsible for the work you're doing, the migration work. And, and that's it. Obviously, there's some um, compliance things that you can adhere to by doing so. Um, so really, yep. Yeah, once again, thanks for watching and we'll, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.